Morning. What a beautiful morning on this slough shore. It's about seven in the morning. I slept really well. <laughs> I was so tired but this turned out to be a very good pitch uh, soft ground comfortable quite dry really it wasn't even that damp and uh, I slept like a log time to get packed up then and back on the road all packed up that was my pitch Leave no trace. I'm feeling much better this morning. Back on the trail. It's another lovely day. And um, I've got a slightly shorter day today. I'm heading for Fort Augustus, which is about 14 miles. Um, so no rush, I can take it easy. And um, I've just had the startings of my first blister for two years. On the heel of my right foot, um, I suppose it's a combination of uh, a long day yesterday and a heavier rucksack than I normally carry with the tent and everything. So I just stopped to uh, sort that out and hopefully it won't get any worse. I caught it early, so let's keep going. Port Augustus, 11 miles. I'm about three miles in, I'm nearly at Lagan, which is down there to the right where the way goes, but there's also a road up the hill there to uh, Invergarian. There are services at both places to stay and such. Um, now the next loch is Loch Oich, and the Great Glenway travels along the south shore of that loch, but you could go around the, the the North Shore if you like uh, but that's where the road goes so best stay on the way but if you've got nowhere to stay you could check out in Big Harry. And this is where we bid farewell to Loch Lochy. Beautiful. That's the toilet and shower block over there on the right, that little white building. Unfortunately, that's out of order as well. So it's a good job I didn't rush to try to get here last night. Oh dear, I did manage to fill up my water bottle though and I'm going to stop here for a late breakfast with that view. This is the big swing bridge at Lagan for the busy road where it crosses and where the canal joins with Loch Oich, another beautiful one.
This is the Invergarry Station project. Looks like they're doing up the little waiting room on the platform too. Cool. There are some quite long sections where you're in the trees the whole time and you can't really see much of the loch or the hills beyond. Um, so that's why when you get the chance, if you do this, uh, take the opportunity to go off the trail a little bit, particularly at the locks and at the, the junctions and that, because often there's some cracking views just around the corner. A bit further on now, and there's another one of these composting toilets here. And a great view of the loch. So I'm gonna take another short break and why not? The informal camping spot I stayed at last night on Loch Lochy uh, is called a Trail Blazers Rest and this is another one just away from this viewpoint down the way there. There are several camping spots on nice grassy land um, under the trees or away from the trees. Super place. I walked on about a hundred yards from that place back there and I thought I'm missing something what is it? Walking poles, I left them there. <laughs> That'd be a bit of a disaster, wouldn't it, for my legs? And I wouldn't be able to put my tent up either. I've got them now though. An old railway tunnel. I thought this was a uh, reminiscent of an old railway line. But that uh, Invergarry station didn't have much track at all. This info board. It said, uh, it seemed logical that to run a railway all the way from Fort William to Inverness. Uh, it got to Fort Augustus, but then um, it didn't continue. There was some haggling over different companies in the Highlands or so, so it never never made it all the way from coast to coast. Um, and it closed in 1946. Oh well. Oh well, this is nice and quiet for walkers, eh? just popped out at the other end of Loch Owey. Oh, doesn't it look beautiful? I'm standing on another one of those big swing bridges at the north end of Loch Owey, but just over there on the north side is the old bridge, which I'm gonna go and take a look at. What a cracker, beautiful old bridge. Now the way carries on on the south side of the canal. You don't need to cross the swing bridge, but the old bridge was just a short distance, so it was worth it. On the way back, the barriers went down, the alarm came on, and I'm stuck on the wrong side of the canal now. Um, but at least that gives me a chance to see the swing bridge open. Here it comes. <laughs> must have been a Caledonian Canal traffic jam. That's the third one that's just come through. Now it's their turn.
and across we go. This is Kitra or Kytra Lock, I'm not sure which. And you can camp over the other side there in those trees, but there are no toilets. And Fort Augustus is about two and a half miles that way. Hooray! I've reached Fort Augustus. 14 miles and it's about half past four now. Well, I found the toilet and the shower block. It's on the opposite side of the canal uh, from the way. It's that white building just behind me down there. Or at least that's the disabled one. Uh, there's one further down, um, which is uh, the same as the others I've seen, but other people have told me that that's closed, but this one was open today, so I made good use of it. And uh, it feels great to get nice and clean and everything washed. Um, it's 20 past six now, so I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna camp. Um, I'm going to wander on down into the village. I know there's a, a shop down there, a petrol station, so I can stock up and um, I'll come back to you. There's a series of locks here. I don't know how many, five or six. And they lead down to Loch Ness in the distance. There's a very tempting array of shops here. There's a fish and chip shop cafe, pub, oh man, what do I do? It's a lovely little village, Fort Augustus. Just had a stroll through, very nice. That's looking back up the locks, the Caledonian Canal Centre and out to Loch Ness. Well, after passing those lovely pubs and the fish and chip shops, you might think I'm a bit nuts, but I'm going to carry on. I'm going to push on and try and squeeze a few more miles out. Now, hang on, before you have a go at me, <laughs> here's my reasons. I had a, a, almost a two hour break. I had shower, I washed all my kit. I got fully rehydrated, all my bottles are full. And when I got up from that, normally you'd be feeling quite stiff at the end of the day, but I felt okay. I felt fine. So I can feel my fitness coming back and I didn't really want a big heavy fish and chips uh, and then a couple of beers and then tomorrow uh, it's looking like being a 21 or a 22 mile day up and down hills as well not flat so uh, I've made the decision um denied for about half an hour and I'm going to try and do two or three miles tonight which is uphill actually um, uh, to try and make tomorrow a bit easier. I was the last customer in the uh, the shop, the Londis supermarket on the way out of town uh, before they shut and they had hardly any food left but I managed to stock up and I'm rocking this, a porridge and banana utility belt. Hey, how many of you have ever done that? <laughs> right, it's time to fuel up and crack on. So just at the back of the village, um, you get to this bridge and then you turn left at this sign for the high route and the low route. Now I wasn't sure whether the high route was open. I've seen on previous videos that it was closed. Well, there's a sign here from Scottish Water saying that all uh, variations of the route are now open. So that's good news. A little bit more than a mile out of the village and you come to this signpost here and the low route continues and curves down on the right and this is the marker post for the high route. This section rises to 330 metres. There are some steep ascents but once up you get breathtaking views of the whole of Loch Ness and that's what I'm after. So let's get on with it. I 
that was pretty steep I think I'm almost at the top now because there's a bit of a clearing here hopefully not much further well I made it to the top and it was about an hour out of the village and about half an hour from the high route marker post uh, a few midges up here but uh, you judge for yourselves whether it was worth it or not gone on a bit further with my midge net on <laughs> um, there's nowhere suitable to camp it's basically uh, marshy land up here um, some of it's bone dry because there hasn't been much rain recently but it, there's nothing that's really suitable so I'm not going back down I'm just going to keep going and here's the midge net now I know it looks ridiculous but it's actually quite effective <laughs> and the view gets better. Well, I was starting to get a bit concerned then because everywhere is marshy up here. And it's a good four miles of up and downs but I managed to find this place by this cairn or shelter there's a bit of half grass half rubbly stones there and I've used uh, rocks to peg it out and uh, this is my living room not bad not a half bad pitch at all It ended up being an extra four miles from Fort Augustus, so but I feel okay. I'm not not as whacked as yesterday. Turned into a, a 19 mile day though with all the ins and outs. So I'm tired, but I'm okay, and uh, that makes tomorrow a lot easier. So see you tomorrow.